Arise, sons and daughters of Sigmar, and welcome to the showdown between the Empire, who shall be led by Karl Franz, and the Warriors of Chaos, who are going to be helmed by Prince Sigval. So on that note, guys, let's jump right into this match and have some fun. So as far as the build goes, we're going to be going very elite. In the front line, we do have three groups of the great swords, and oftentimes most Chaos players are going to be bringing Marauders and just kind of non-AP troops because they're expecting state troops like Spearman with Shields and just standard Swordsmen and stuff like that because most Empire players, from my anecdotal experience, like to use very heavy calves. He'll use Demogriff Knights and Handgunners in the back, and we'll just use Chaff to hold you in the front line. So I'm going to be trying to catch my opponent off guard, and great swords with buffs can actually be pretty strong. So we have three great swords in total, and we do also have a Warrior Priest who's going to be supporting them. So the Warrior Priest, he's uh, definitely going bald for Sigmar here, but this guy does some serious work. So he does have the Hammer of Sigmar to give 26 melee attack to all nearby troops when he activates it, of course. So that plus the uh, Soulfire. Soulfire gives 90% magic resist. So if they're going to be coming in with a Shadow, Melkos, Misfying Miasma, Pendulums, Fatabuna, Spirit Leeches, this can give you some really good uh, you know, defense if you can react quick enough, which I often don't, but there have been games where someone was like casting a fat Fatabuna on some Demogriff Knights, and I was able to hide them next to the Soulfire and get some really good damage resist. On top of that, we do also have the Shield of Faith. Shield of Faith does give 22% ward save against all types of damage, so that is going to buff up your frontline pretty well, right? So against like standard Marauders or non-AP infantry, these guys are just going to become lawnmowers with the Hammer of Sigmar. Plus, you also stack that with the Jade Wizard. Now, Jade Wizard, yes, has healing, which is always efficient with elite troops. But more importantly, you have the Shield of Thorns. So Shield of Thorns gives you 25% weapon damage and 22% physical resist, if I'm not mistaken. Did I get it right? Yes, I got it right. That's awesome. So yeah, this is going to buff up your front line. It's going to be really nice and make those great swords into you know pretty much elite infantry. On top of that, we do also have Karl Franz. Karl's a bit of a risky pick. I mean, I think that he's a great pick, but you have to be careful with him. And if you have lore of healing, it's not so bad, but he is a bit of a glass cannon. He doesn't have the, I mean, I guess his melee defense isn't bad. I guess they I might have buffed that recently. I remember it used to be in the, like the 30s, give or take, but he is like the sniper. So if you're able to catch like uh, high value characters like casters, or even get a rear charge on some dragon ogres or a frontal charge with support, Karl Franz can take them apart, especially with Galmaraz. And he's by far my favorite character in the Empire. He's just such a beast. And uh, yeah, again, glass cannon, but I think in the hands of like good players, Carl Franz can be the absolute destroyer of worlds. On the flanks of the formation, we do have a couple of flagellants. So flagellants are actually pretty good against marauders. They can put up a good fight there. Plus one of the big issues with going with an Empire gun line, which I did, I have these silver bullets, handgunners, serial and revenge, is that, you know, the Empire formation can often collapse. Now in the center, I'm not too worried. Warrior Priest gives leadership. I have healing, relatively elite infantry by Empire standards. So I should be okay there. But the flanks, I didn't have enough money to get like well, more elite troops, right? So I had to kind of compromise. And I think flagellants are a good compromise because they're unbreakable. So they're going to allow your guns to fire. And even if they do falter, I have three halberds in the back. So halberds are quite good against chaos for dual purposes. Uh, firstly, they have a you know, pretty good anti-large against dragon ogres, monsters, chaos knights. They have good AP against infantry and just a solid, you know, resol you know resolute, resilient troop here. So charge fence against all isn't bad either. That's pretty much it for my force. I'm not going to be trying to get battlefield control. It's going to be a very defensive style of play. Normally, I usually use Demogriff Knights and those type of troops to you know win the open field engagements using a Warrior Priest and Carl. But in this case, I'm going to be trying to hold proud for Sigmar. And for my opponent's army, definitely very prepared for Demogriff Knights. He does have the Summoners of Rage plus Dragon Ogres over here. He has uh, some Chaos Warhounds with Poison. So really trying to look, in, to, look to catch out some Cav units, which... Uh, would have been very scary, but in my situation, it's mainly going to be weathering the storm and the onslaught of these dragon ogres. Frontline, pretty much standard chaos as well. It's going to be uh, chaos marauders, mirror guard, and he does have some AP. I think against empire nowadays, a lot of people do try and you know mix it up and get great swords. I think bringing two great weapons can certainly be very good, but I mean he has ample resources here. Plus his dragon ogres have good AP if he wants to collapse in the front. Chaos sorcerer has flaming skull plus the cascading fire cloak, and Sigvald. I think he does. I don't think Sigvald is a terribly competitive pick, but I think if there is a niche in which he's okay, it's going to be against the Empire because Empire does often love to snipe with their handguns and Karl Franz, and he is very, very tough to snipe. I mean, Sigvald is an absolute monster of a tank because he heals himself, he's on foot, and uh, yeah, he's just uh, he's a tough cookie to crack. On the far side, there's some more hounds, so my opponent has plenty of tools to wrap around. I think he has two hounds in total, so he's going to be pressuring my back line. Dragon Ogres will be coming in and uh, causing some problems, and definitely looking forward to showing you guys this battle. Right now, let me scoot my chair forward a little bit and get in position to. Uh, to cast this game for you because I don't know why my chair is just all, all goofy right now. But anyways, right out of the gates here, Karl Franz is going to be jumping downtown, going after the Chaos Sorcerer. Now, I missed the initial Alpha Strike. My opponent does have the moves like Jagger and was able to dodge it. So Carl's going to be chasing here, but he's not really going to be ca able to catch here. So I do just club a couple Marauders, and from here, I'm going to be pulling out the back and just trying to escape. So, you know, had Carl made contact, I probably could have brought that Chaos Sorcerer down relatively low, or at least to, you know, 70%. Uh, well, not low, but, you know, 70%, 80%, which would have been pretty good value, because Chaos, of course, can't heal. But in the meantime, Carl Franz is going to be buying time for my forces to retreat down the hill here, because, you know, fighting up in this hill it was just, it's such a weird map. Like, if one army starts, like, up on the high ground here and gets to collapse down in the other one, so I just kind of repositioned down in the valley here to make 
make sure all my guns had line of sight. But, you know, Chaos doesn't have any issue advancing. That's what they want to do anyways. So Karl Franz is going to be flying over the army. There's no throwing axes, nothing like that. So I have relative impunity here, and I don't think he has fireball. Looks like Cascading Fire Cloak and the Burning Skull. Burning Skull, of course, does quite a bit of damage here. So the Mirror Guard are going to be coming in, and we are going to be getting some huge volleys coming in here with the Sterling to Revenge, as well as the Silver Bullets on Sigvald, but he does have a Silver Shield, and a Burning Skull actually goes down the formation, but he was actually casting it on the Hand Gunners. I thought it was going to be going down the front line, so a beautiful cast from my opponent. It definitely tricked me. I thought he was going to be going right down here, and it was just kind of a, I was like, oh, great sword. that's not going to be that bad, but he roasted my Hand Gunners. He roasted Sterling's Revenge right here. Very, very good play right there. So in the meantime, my Hand Gunners are going to be shooting in. Not too many good targets until the Dragon Ogres come in, so the Brave Sons of Sigmar are going to be braced at the bottom of the valley and here goes the fighting so the guns are going off we're shooting into the dragon ogres and these uh these great swords have their work cut out for them and the dragon ogres have great ap so they are going to be able to club but the warrior priest comes in chanting the incantations and the you know the the prayers of sigmar just with the hammer of sigmar shield of faith all that going down and suddenly these great swords are going to be pretty meaty and carl franz just like the cinematic trailer is going to be flying in to smite these foul chaos beasts so yes he's going to be taking some damage he's relatively surrounded but the entire time Carl is fighting here, he's getting his anti-large attacks in here. Plus, all the guns are just withering into these forces, getting huge damage. And you can see the Summoners of Rage uh, are definitely taking a beating, but the other group of Dragon Ogres pretty much just crash can, uh, trash can right there. Flagellant, in the meantime, going to be going after the Marauders on the flanks. But I do have pretty good backline protection. And every time my opponent tries to slip in the backline, I intercept with my Halberds. And I'm being very methodical to just screen. So you can see... Whenever I have a lapse in my defenses in the back, I'm switching the halberds up, just making sure to screen every angle I can. And it looks like another Burning Skull is going to be going down, so I do try and dodge that at the last second, but I was a little bit slow and my opponent gets a little bit more value. Now the great sword's definitely fighting hard for Sigmar. The Shield of Thorns is going to be going down, making them pretty tough. And they're actually putting a bit of a whooping here on the Mirror Guard. Now Mirror Guard are a very powerful elite troop in their own right, but again, they don't have the best AP. So against physical resist plus the uh, you know the Shield of Thorns on these guys, or the armor I should say, they're going to be uh, pretty resilient. Karl Franz is going to be jumping into the front line to club down this Chaos Sorcerer, and he's getting some pretty good damage. Granted, he is slightly surrounded by the Summoners of Rage, but it's not a bad situation necessarily because the Summoners of Rage are basically just, you know, not they're not pushing into my back line. They're uh, just sitting here beating on Carl, but the whole time they're going to be taking withering fire, just hails of fire coming in from Silver Bullets and Sterling's Revenge. And Chaos is trying to get into the back line, but I have plenty of auxiliary here and reserve troops, so the Halberds are in position, the Jade Wizard's helping. I have Flagellant screening out this angle, who were able to win their flank fight. And with that, the Bounce Fire does pull into my favor here. You can see this Foul Chaos Sorcerer is going to be uh, getting smoked upon the mountain. And it looks like Prince Sigvald, knowing the back line is a bit of an issue, is going to be charging back here, taking Powder to the face. But the Blessings of Slanesh are going to protect him this day. And it looks like he's going to be getting in there relatively unimpeded. But Karl Franz, knowing his men are in trouble, is going to be coming over here, charging with Galmaraz, which isn't going to help him too much here. But there's Dragon Ogres, all kinds of pressure in the back line. But the Halberds are going to be piling in. Karl Franz has been brought to his men, and he is going to be laying a whooping on these Chaos uh, Heretics here. So right here, the Halberds in the back going to be forming another screen. So like I said, this entire game, I was making a huge emphasis to just keep my screens up because you have a lot of Hounds, you have a lot of Marauders, a lot of backline troops that could, you know, seriously compromise my situation. And for example, had I not been able to get those gunshots off and tear down the Dragon Ogres and those other troops and had Chaos gotten into the back line, I probably would have eventually lost the frontline engagement because the Dragon Ogres would have been able to pound on my Greatswords. But here you can see we do have the Warrior Priest as well, and he's going to continue this grind. And the Flagellants plus the Greatswords are in really, really good shape here. And they're actually... Young. I just actually switched my keyboard, so I'm getting a little bit used to the buttons here. But the Chaos Warriors are getting pushed back with the Great Swords, and they actually have three Chevrons. So these guys have gotten so much damage in. 95 kills against Chaos Infantry is definitely pretty impressive, especially considering they're fighting the Mirror Guard. So these shirtless lads of Sigmar are going to be charging in as well, and hopefully putting a little bit of punch on the situation. But whenever the Dragon Ogres come back in, I grab all my guns, I start shooting downtown, because I know those guys really need to be dealt with. So as far as what Chaos has left, there's a couple of hounds up in the hills here who have just rallied, so those guys could come back in and cause some problems. And you can see my opponent is going to be charging back in to try and get some damage in. Chaos Marauders on the far side, some Chaos Warriors with great weapons. And he actually did have two groups of great weapons, so I did miss the second group, which I think is very, very important. But nonetheless, I mean, the gun line just tore apart those Dragon Ogres, which was pretty impressive. Some of the hounds do try and get into the back, but the Flagellants are happily there to intercept them. And the Silver Bullets are going to be shooting downtown. But Sigvald is actually quite tanky here. We haven't been able to really put him in his place yet, but Karl Franz going to be jumping in with the club with the good old Gaul Miraz, and it looks like Sigvald is going to be falling this day. So I don't know if there's much left for my opponent. That's pretty much going to be all she wrote as Carl Franz is going to be cleaning up shop. But Sigvald, got to give him some props. I mean, he tanked it like an absolute boss. And he actually put up a bit of a beating on Carl here. Carl's going to be jumping back into the main fight to just try and tear out them while the Halberds and other troops just pile in and uh, finish off Sigvald. So the Warrior Priest front line was super effective at that battle. I mean, man, and I, I do like my opponent's build. The fact that he did bring two great weapons, it actually looks very similar to builds I used to bring. 
Um, yeah, but I think that the the, uh, the great swords with 110, 109, and 89 against Chaos Infantry is definitely solid. Uh, the healing plus the the hammer of Sigmar, the shield of faith, the earth bloods, the regrowth, the shield of thorns. I mean, there were so many buffs on those great swords that they were able to just grind out that front line, which is definitely very fun. Yeah, so I really like the Warrior Priest front line. I feel like it's pretty good. Carl Franz, of course, always a solid pick. If they go with Kolek or Archeon or other characters like that, Carl Franz can have timing charges using the uh, the Galmaraz whenever it's up to just go and attack and then pull back and heal, go after other targets and rinse and repeat. He can be a very, very good character against Chaos for sure. And, you know, obviously, even if they bring Chaos Dragons with his buffs and healing, he can do some work. Uh, the gun line was good. Uh, I think... Yeah, I think it's good. I think this is a right amount. Um, only seven kills, 24 and 13, but they did a ton of damage and they pretty much single-handedly attacked the Dragon Ogres. So by not bringing Cav, we kind of took away the effectiveness of the Dragon Ogres and forced them into situations in which they probably didn't want to be. Having to fight in the center pocket with guns and halberds everywhere, definitely not a situation that they're going to be happy with. So it was a fun build. I definitely think it was solid. I have to admit, I felt a little bit naked not bringing anything to kind of control the map and just kind of yielding that to my opponent. But with the amount he invested, two Dragon Ogres plus three Hounds, I think had I invested even like two Demogriff Knights, I would have had problems because of the uh, three Hounds plus two Dragon Ogres. Like had I gotten caught once by Hounds, uh, the Dragon Ogres following up, it could have been pretty ugly for sure. So I, I actually like this build. I think it was quite quite a bit of fun. Uh, Flagellants did really well. They actually beat the brakes off the Marauder, 75 and 78. Definitely no complaints on those guys. So, yeah, definitely fun stuff. So well played to my opponent, uh, ACR. Hopefully, for a second, I thought it said Ark, but just just a bit of a moment there. But, yeah, well played to my opponent, ACR. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this Empire build. And you know what? Let's actually take a bit of a look at a Chaos build that I think would be very efficient in this situation against uh, against a build like this. My apologies for the text messages. I must be pretty popular. Uh, you know, in all reality, it's probably just like some sort of a build. Like, you owe us $85. Let me turn this off real quick before it beeps again. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and jump, uh, jump over and take a look at a Chaos build here, and uh, we'll see how we like it. So we're going to continue on. I definitely think Sigvald is kind of a big limiting factor there. Like, if you had Sartorial, for example, Sigvald is relatively easy to kind of pigeonhole and just kind of keep in his place. But if you come in with, like, uh, you know, Sartorial pushing in, and you don't, I mean, Carl Franz can go after him, but even still, I think that, like, he can be a pretty seriously angry bird here. So we're going to go for uh, Plague of Rust. Okay, Transmutation of Lead. I think we'll go with these two spells for now. It's really, really good in the front line, and I think that final transmutation, given the right circumstances, can be really good. And it's funny, right? As I start to, like, look at a build with Sartorial, this, like, pigeon or bird or something in my backyard is just going crazy. I don't know if you guys can hear that. So um, I think you definitely need to respect the uh, AP in the front line. As such, I think three Chaos Warriors with Great Opens is going to be really good. We get a couple Marauders as well who are going to be pushing around. I think Marauders are always a pretty good pick. And I really actually like the Throwing Axes here. The throwing Axes are pretty good against Empire Heavy Cav. They also serve as a backline harass tool. Those guys can do some serious work. So we're going to get a couple Hounds. I think that's also very important. Now, at this moment, if they do have Carl Franz coming in after Big Bird, you have three groups of Marauder uh, Horsemen with Throwing Axes kind of picking them apart, doing really good damage against Carl. So I think that's kind of a good synergy there. Plus, they're good against Empire Heavy Cav. And if you have to, you can use them as a disruption tool in the back line. I used to like Forsaken a lot, but I feel like Forsaken are just in a bit of a, a bad place due to balance. Now, Dragon Ogres are a very good pick against Zembergriff Knights and things like that. Chaos Knights can also do some pretty good work, especially with the support of uh, Throwing Axes and Poison Hounds and things like that. So, I don't know. I'm a bit on the fence about that. Um, as far as infantry, I think we're relatively good. Three Great Weapons, you know, buffed Great Swords will beat them. But if you have Warp Chicken, you have Final Transmutation, and if you decide to drop Transmutation of Lead, for example, it's going to be, you know, a good fight for your guys. You can get the Mirror Guard as well. Mirror Guard, definitely not bad, but you're going to be sending in the Marauders first, and I think having the AP is quite helpful, even against, like, Demogriff Knights, Empire Knights. It's nice having a little bit of AP on your infantry to help out there. So from here, you kind of have a choice. You can go with, like, Chaos Knights and, and use that as kind of your focal point, like two Chaos Knights, or you can get some Dragon Ogres. I mean, there's a multitude of different ways to go about this. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can even get, like, the Summoners of Rage plus, like, the... I don't know if you can afford both of those. I don't think you can. So, yeah, you can get, like, Summoners or something. I mean, I, I personally really like, actually, Standard Chaos Knights. It's a little bit micro-intensive, and their AP isn't the best, but if you do have the Throwing Axe support, these guys are just really good at just ransacking infantry and getting into the back. And if you want, you can even, like, cut one Throwing Axe and get, like, a Chaos Chariot just to push in because they're going to be so occupied, and having one Chariot just push into the back line definitely can stress your opponent out. So maybe a build like this, or you cut the Chaos Knights and get Dragon Ogres. Both of them are, are solid options, I think. So again, well played to my opponent ACR. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, Empire game for Sigmar. We will see you guys next time. Take care.